Well, this is the snowy day that the Lord has made. Come on, let's say that again. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are grateful to be in this space, to be in this place, to be in this time of worship. Here in person, gathered through cyberspace online, whether in person or in cyberspace, we are always gathered in Christ. So welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church. Birmingham, Michigan, everybody's church, where everybody has a part to play. I uh, want to call our attention to some information this morning. Deacon's Pantry is still taking donations for Welcome In. Uh, fleece throw blankets, aspirin, Tylenol, leave Motrin, all those can be dropped off here or at the donation bin outside the Eagle entrance. Uh, January 14th, at ele from 11.30 to about 2.30, our Matthew 25 work group is sponsoring a screening and discussion of the documentary, Who We Are. You can reserve a spot by using the QR code in First Things or signing up on the table outside of Calvin Hall here at the church. Um, we'll still take donations for the Giving Tree, uh, mittens, gloves, and hats for our children in Alcott School. So please uh, help us out to, to do that during these cold winter months. January 7th, our stage youth ministry at 5 o'clock will be a youth-led worship service here in our sanctuary celebrating Epiphany. Encourage you to put that on your calendar and come back and attend. Uh, many of our own youth from First Pres are participating in that service, and uh, it's going to be a really great, uh, great service, so I encourage you to come back for that. Uh, also, Moms of Young Children, we have a moms group meeting here on Sunday mornings from 9 to 10, so if you have questions about that, contact Martha Piesco. Um, and finally, we've got a few poinsettias that are here. They have survived the Christmas season. They are yours for the taking. Please come down front after worship, take one uh, to your home or to the home of someone you know that might, uh, might enjoy that gift. Um, I'm going to have us set aside our announcements now and prepare our hearts for worship.
Please join me in the call to worship. People of God, rejoice. The very word of God came to earth and lived among us. Let us worship and praise the Lord our God with joy as grace filled people. Let us worship God. be seated. I invite any of our younger church to come down front for a time with the younger church. Crickets. Okay. All right. That's good. That's good. Well, we're going to just jump over the time with younger children, but we're going to go into the litany for Christmas. And so um, anybody under the age, well, you decide if you want to be the children's voice, which is the um, glory to God in the highest. And I will read the congregation. If you want to come in on the congregation, that's great. Otherwise, you need to remember, you are messengers of God. You are angels of God. Angel in the Greek basically refers to someone who brings a message. Someone who brings good news into the world. And so you have to shout, glory to God in the highest, like you are bringing the best news ever into the world. Okay? All right. On your mark, get set. I'm the congregation. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. Glory to God in the highest. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Glory to God in the highest. For a child has been born for us, a son has been given to us. Glory to God in the highest. He is wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Glory to us is born in the city of David a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. Glory to God in the highest. Amen and alleluia. Now, if there are any young ones here that did want to go off to, um, oh no, we don't doing that today, are we? So you're just going to stay right there, all right, and enjoy the rest of the service because God's here and you're here and we're all going to worship God together. 
but we are going to come to God in a time of confession. Uh, as a people of God who know, lean into, and rely on the promise of God's grace, we come to this baptismal font to be remembered and reclaimed in these baptismal waters and to be reminded of our forgiveness. But to do that, we also need to be honest, and that's why we confess together in a unison voice and then in the personal silence of our hearts and minds. Let us pray. God of grace and truth, in Jesus Christ you came among us as light shining in darkness. We confess that we have not welcomed the light or trusted good news to be good. We have closed our eyes to glory in our midst, expecting little and hoping for less. Forgive our doubt and renew our hope so that we may receive the fullness of your grace and live in the truth of Christ the Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Believe the good news. Let us live our lives by the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Join me in the prayer for illumination. Gracious God, by the gift of your Holy Spirit, show us the word made flesh, the good news of great joy for all. Amen. Our first testament reading comes from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all people, princes and all rulers of the earth. Young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Thanks. Just the lighter. Thank you. Our second testament reading comes to us this day from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. Uh, let's lean in and listen now to God's word for us this day. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place in the guest room. Now in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Siblings in Christ, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Come, O Holy Spirit, come. Come as the fire and burn, come as the wind and cleanse, come as the light and reveal, convict us, convert us, consecrate us until we are wholly thine. And now, Lord, my prayer is simply this, that the words of my mouth and the words of all our hearts, that these will be found pleasing and acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So our Christmas journey began a little over four weeks ago. We, we started our journey toward the manger. We, we, we celebrated through Advent the gifts of hope, peace, joy, love, coming together in our world, coming together in one in Jesus the Christ. We made our way to the manger. We made our way to the nativity to meet the usual suspects, Mary, Joseph, you know the rest. And while we are a people who come to the manger in faith, we need to remember sometimes there are those who come to the nativity with alternative ideas. A little over 10 years ago, maybe you read of this, heard of this, there were a rash of thefts from nativity scenes all around the United States. Thieves were absconding with one specific figure from the nativity scene. It was the main character. It was the one of whom Imogene Herdman uh, declared in that classic children's book by Barbara Robinson, the best Christmas pageant ever. Uh, Imogene declared of this one who was stolen, he never would have gotten out of kindergarten if he had to write all the names by which we know him. We said some of them earlier, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. And by now you've guessed it, the one stolen more than any other was the infant lowly, the one in whom our hopes and fears are met, baby Jesus. Churches were finding that their baby Jesus was stolen right out from under their noses or at least their front lawns. Parishioners and staff would come in and find the manger empty. They'd look at that scene and they'd find the nativity community staring down into nothing but a bed of straw. Police reported most of the thefts were pranks. Baby Jesus, though lost, was usually quickly found. Monmouth, Illinois, it went like this. Five sorority sisters took him from the town square, placed him on the president's front lawn. Fredericksburg, Virginia, an 80-pound statue of baby Jesus, if an 80-pound statue can be a baby, that is, <laughs> was taken. And the one who took him posted photos of him on, of all places, Facebook. And the braggart was quickly turned in. 
Now, we've looked at just two rather funny sides of stealing baby Jesus, though we cannot overlook that there may be a possibility that there are those who would be prompted to steal the baby out of angst or anger at Christianity. There could be those who would like to see Jesus removed from the public eye, and while not grand larceny, taking Jesus from a manger scene could be seen by them as symbolic, a gesture of a desire to get rid of him before he and his followers can cause any more trouble. And so whether out of merriment or malice, these thefts leave us wondering, what is a church to do? It's a question that could be answered in one of two ways, both of which carry with it an opportunity. The first choice is an opportunity for monetary gain. Amid these Bethlehem baby boy kidnappings, security companies found a chance to make a profit. They installed GPS trackers on baby Jesuses used in outdoor nativity displays. The price a church could pay and have access to their Savior's whereabouts through a computer or a smartphone whenever he was away from the manger. They then could find him and get him back to where he belongs. Now the second choice poses another opportunity, though this is a, a different one. For this one looks at it through a lens of faith. For when it comes to faith, Perhaps it's about following where the Christ child goes. Maybe Jesus' place is beyond the church's perimeter. Maybe Jesus calls us beyond our walls and beyond our comfort zone. Maybe Jesus awakens in us something that sends us out rather than hems us in. This happened in Dittmer, Montana. St. John's United Church of Christ found their baby Jesus was stolen from their outdoor nativity scene every year. Their pastor, Scott Lowe, saw this though not as a detriment to the gospel, rather he saw it as an opportunity. They chose to keep the manger occupied in another way. He said, we didn't want to be found nailing baby Jesus down or tying him to an anchor or putting a chain on him. We wanted a way to put the display on our lawn that was symbolic of the season and also symbolized what Christmas is really about. And so the church continued their nativity display with a slight twist. Instead of a plastic doll or statue of baby Jesus in the manger, what you found were hundreds of ornaments depicting the baby Jesus and a sign which read, free, take one. Christ's gift, Los says, what the church believes is he doesn't belong to us, so you can't steal him from us. We belong to him. We go where he goes. Now, interestingly, the world seems to get this while sometimes we in the church miss it. We want Jesus to stay right where he is. We don't want anyone to mess with him. We want to leave him right there. We want a Jesus who somehow orbits our personal atmosphere, meeting our personal needs. We want a Jesus we can admire rather than a Jesus who calls us to care for the world's needs and act in redemptive ways. We want a Jesus we can meet with for an hour once a week and then neatly box and place him on a shelf until the following week. We want a Jesus who doesn't ask too much of us. Now, if we're honest with ourselves, if, if I'm honest with myself, then I admit that I've been there. I've not wanted Jesus to ask too much of me. Yet the truth is that while some may steal Jesus, we who claim him must take it a step further. We must let this Jesus run amok in our lives 
For the Bethlehem baby boy, God's word made flesh, came to change the world and us along with it. This is how the Apostle Paul put it in his letter to Titus. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is sure. I desire that you insist on these things so that those who have come to believe in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable to everyone. We receive a gift and then we pass it on. We don't hold on to Jesus with what some might call a a white knuckle tight grip. Rather, we we release and, and we share Jesus with the world. Or rather, we let him share himself through the world through us. Christ is a gift. That's what the church believes. He doesn't belong to us, and so you can't steal him from us. We belong to him. We go where he goes. You see, Jesus doesn't need protected, guarded, tracked, or defended. Jesus simply wants to be faithfully followed. And sometimes that means stepping outside of our comfort zones as we serve. I close with the following story. It's a real-life case of a stolen baby Jesus as it aired on the television series Dragnet. Do we remember Dragnet? All right. Um, Tom Hanks and Dan Aykroyd did a movie about it, for those of you that don't remember the original. Um, I wouldn't recommend the movie because it wasn't that good. But hey, give it a shot. Uh, There was a church in this episode in Los Angeles. They had their baby Jesus stolen from the church's nativity display, and the investigation into the theft found nothing. And then one morning, a little boy came walking down the center aisle toward the priest, pulling a red wagon into which lay the church's baby Jesus. When asked about where he'd found the baby Jesus, the little boy explained that he had prayed for a wagon for Christmas and that if he got the wagon, he would take Jesus for a ride in the wagon. And that is just what he was doing, making good on his promise, and now he was returning Jesus back to his home. The episode ended saying, no charges were filed, Case closed. When God said yes to us in Bethlehem's baby boy, God promised through the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus the Christ that we would never be lost, we would never be left, we would never be abandoned. When Jesus said yes to us, When we said yes to God through our faith commitment in this Jesus, in Bethlehem's baby boy, we promised to God to take Jesus the Christ with us wherever we go. We don't need a little red wagon. All we need is a life that invests in those faith forming disciplines of our Christian faith that help us to keep our eyes open to see where Jesus wants to lead us to see the opportunities to sharing the good news of God's love with others. For Christ is a gift. This is what the church believes. He doesn't belong to us, and so you cannot steal him from us. We belong to him, and we go where he goes. For that is our charge. Case still pending. Alleluia. And amen. In response.
to the many good gifts that God so graciously and freely brings into our lives, we give back to God now through our tithes, our offerings, our time, our talents. I invite our ushers to come forward for the giving and receiving of our tithes and offerings, and I encourage us to, to know some of the other gifts of God around us by taking time to sign those friendship pads and pass those down the row and then back from where they began. We give to God with glad and grateful hearts.
loving and ever giving God, we are grateful for the many good gifts you bring into our lives and we give back to you now our tithes, our offerings, our talents, our treasures, our time. We ask your blessing upon these gifts that we dedicate to you, that you'll give us eyes to see and ears to hear, hearts to be moved and minds to discern where to use these, that the lives they encounter will know your love and your grace. And we believe this can happen because we do not pray it in our name, rather we pray it in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Let us once more come to God in a time of prayer. Let us pray. God of all time, we are grateful for the providence and guidance you offer your people through your grace and mercy. We seek your presence once again as we stand poised to welcome in the new year. Help us demonstrate Christ's love in all we do as a church and in our personal lives. God of all circumstances, help us put our trust in you and strive first for your kingdom and your righteousness. Help us to look to you for how best to ask for and offer forgiveness. Help us to use the gifts you've given to us that we would glorify you. God of all wisdom, we often do not know how to pray as we ought. And so we thank you for your Spirit's intercession for us with sighs too deep for words. Lord, in your mercy and where our words fail us, we pray once again for your spirit to intercede that peace, justice, reconciliation, healing, truth, new hearts, and clear vision would be seen at work in our world, your world. God of all life, your steadfast love and mercy are the sure foundation for our lives. We thank you for the life, ministry, death, resurrection, and ascension of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. As your children and heirs, may we lead lives worthy of the calling to which we have been called, that with humility and gentleness, with patience, we might bear with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. God of all time, God of all circumstances, God of all wisdom, God of all life, hear our prayers. Incline your ear to us. Grant us your peace as we pray now the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
We have worshipped, and now the work begins. We have gathered, and now we must go back out into the world to be the hands and feet of God at work in this world. We go together, and we go knowing the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus the Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit, world without end. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we go into this world to be God's people. The peace of Christ be with you, and may we share the peace of Christ with those around us and with the world around us beyond this space. Peace be with you. Go in God's peace. Amen.